Okay, so our second speaker in the YI Record Virtual Symposium is going to be Claire Blenko from the Sussex Biodiversity Records Centre. I asked Claire to come and talk because Claire and her team have been working with I Record for quite a bit now, and they've really embraced the system. And Claire is going to tell us about what she's been hearing back from the local community. So give us a county perspective on online recording. Um, uh, so Claire, over to you to tell us about what you've been doing in Sussex for 10 years. Great, thanks for the invite, Kieran. When I uh, offered this talk title, I didn't fully think through quite how tricky it would be to fit 10 years of talking to people about iRecord into one relatively short talk. So I've tried to focus really on that question of why iRecord uh, and take you through some of our thinking and also perspectives locally. So just to say who we are at Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre, we're the local environmental record centre for East Sussex, West Sussex and Brighton and Hove. We're part of a network of uh, LERCs across the UK. Uh, and we exist to be an impartial and non-profit provider of environmental data and information services. And we do that by working in partnership with data users, but also importantly, data providers. Uh, and that includes lots of people like yourselves on the call today. Uh, and you can find out more about us at sxbrc.org.uk. Uh, just to orientate you to where Sussex is down on the south coast. Uh, and we've got two vice counties to deal with, West Sussex and East Sussex, uh, but happily they align reasonably well with modern county boundaries. Um, so we don't have some of the complications that uh, LERCs have in other parts of the country uh, overlaying with uh, the vice county recording network. So uh, Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre recommends iRecord, which is the system uh, developed, managed and maintained by the Biological Record Centre nationally. Uh, that's what we say to try and keep our messaging uh, as simple and straightforward as possible. Um, there are a, a couple of nuances to it. If your particular focus is on recording birds, then we would recommend bird track. Uh, and we are also very aware that a range of other wildlife recording systems and apps are available. Uh, and what we say to people is, if you're using a, a different system, have a chat with us. Um, there are usually ways to enable sharing of data with Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre. So iRecord is not the only way to share your records with Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre, but is the primary system that we recommend. And why is that? I'm going to go back in time uh, to 10 years ago. This is before I worked at Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre. I wasn't I wasn't working in the biological recording sector then, um, but I was an enthusiastic volunteer wildlife recorder myself. Uh, and back then, the manager of Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre was busy negotiating service level agreements with one of our partners, Natural England. Uh, and one of the shared objectives uh, that went into that service level agreement was around promoting online recording. Um, and there were a number of deliverables that were agreed. Uh, and at that time, there was funding, which enabled uh, us as organizations to collaborate and, and sort of align ourselves behind a shared objective uh, of getting online recording systems in place. Um, and in those heady times of 2012 and 2013, um, there was also money around. Uh, I gather it was DEFRA funding that was managed by the National Biodiversity Network Trust. Uh, and Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre worked with them to deliver uh, a series of iRecord training sessions. Uh, so they delivered some at Sussex University in 2012, uh, and they delivered a whole roadshow in 2013, uh, which looking back at the paperwork, I think at least one person on this call today was, was at those roadshows, John Van Breeder. Um, and just a bit of feedback there from the documentation we still have that the training went really well and was well received by the biological recorders that attended. Uh, and as proof of concept, it showed uh, I record to be the appropriate online recording system for Sussex. Um, it's 
easier, it's easier to integrate with our core database than other means. Uh, and it provides a live picture of the data which recorders appreciate. So there was there was a lot of thought and, a, and quite a lot of investment that went into getting set up with using iRecord locally uh, back then. Uh, and one of the sort of key things that is always highlighted to me uh, since I started my role about eight years ago is that iRecord functions as a community. Uh, there's a whole different range of people that are interacting with iRecord. You've got the data managers at the Biological Rec Record Center and other organizations that are using the Indicia Data Warehouse to manage their data sets. Uh, you've got the verifier network, which is an absolutely crucial and key selling point of the iRecord system. Verifiers are in the vast majority volunteers um, and there's a patchwork of people who are looking at verifying data either from the perspective of national schemes and societies or from a local um, patch vice county perspective uh, or also uh, projects and some local environmental record centers. So SXBRC provides some input to that verification network but in Sussex it's almost entirely done by volunteers. Um, you've got the data users uh, and also the recorders uh, and from our perspective as Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre, one of the key selling points of iRecord is the LRC download facility, uh, which has sort of been built in um, to the iRecord system from the beginning, uh, meaning that record centres can make data available to users of our services by downloading it and incorporating it into our databases. Um, and our policy, once we've downloaded that data, is to make use of data that has been verified as correct or considered correct. Uh, and if you're a user of iRecord, you'll be familiar with um, the, the feedback that you get from the verifier network using these verification terms. Uh, so why, why iRecord? Well, from Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre perspective, um, if you're sharing your data via iRecord, and we've invested time in making the local verifier network as comprehensive as possible so that we can mobilize that data through verification into our databases, then that data gets used um, by all the users of our data request service. Um, the, the vast majority of uh, people requesting data from Sussex Biodiversity Record Center need it for uh, reasons relating to planning applications and ecological appraisals, but there are also lots of users who are using it for conservation and land management, uh, and also personal interest in informing other projects uh, and developing neighborhood plans, et cetera. Uh, so another good reason to share your data via iRecord is to mobilize it to all those users. Uh, and in terms of the recorders, uh, I like this quote from Ruth Eastwood, who's a member, who's uh, one of the verifiers with Sussex Botanical Recording Society, iRecord is great because there are lots of people who use it in different ways and it has a wider recording net than our recording society. Some users record their local patch, others are photographers who like to provide great images of all the taxa they encounter, some are beginners and some focus on specific taxa. So that openness of the iRecord system, again, I think is one of its strengths. Um, and, and its accessibility, uh, but it's also one of the things that presents challenges to data managers and verifiers um, dealing with such a, a broad spectrum of data from a, a broad spectrum of recorders. Um, so I couldn't talk about Sussex uh, without talking about the seaside. Uh, and what you can see there is um, a series of shore search survey locations that have been recorded via one of the um, indicia implementations that links to iRecord, uh, which is the Wildlife Trust Shore Search uh, Survey Program. So iRecord is a, is a key tool uh, for the Sussex Wildlife Trust in relation to marine recording and conservation, uh, because it's the system that's used to capture the shore search data. Uh, and Ella Garrett at Sussex Wildlife Trust told me that shore search data is, in, is incredibly valuable because uh, it's helps us to monitor our fragile marine life 
and better understand the effects of pollution, climate change and invasive species. Uh, and they are using that data to designate marine conservation zones and it's continuing to be used as evidence to help implement new conservation measures. Uh, and in the context of marine recording, another person I wanted to mention in this talk uh, is Keith, Keith Alexander. Um, now, Kieran, who's presenting today, is very persuasive. Uh, but the reason I really wanted to give this talk is because of Keith. Because every time I see Keith, he really wants to talk to me about iRecord, and in particular, verification. Uh, because I know that that's a, something that people are very conscious of when they're using the iRecord system is, are their records being verified? Um, and Keith recognizes that the verifiers are all volunteers uh, and he has reasonable expectations of what people can manage to do when they've got work and holidays. Uh, and he, he really appreciates everything that the volunteer verifiers do. Um, but it's also a source of <laughs> some well, it's a real motivator to him when his records do get verified. Uh, so he sent me a selection of, of observations he's made that have been verified. Uh, and it's just incredible to think about the observations that volunteers are sharing day in, day out via iRecord, providing these glimpses of the incredible biodiversity uh, that we have in Sussex and across the UK. So these are just a selection of things that Keith has recorded in our record on the Sussex coast. Um, and then he sent me um, a selection of his observations uh, that are not verified. And I always say to Keith, well, they're not verified yet, but you've, you've recorded them. That data has been captured and you never know when someone's gonna come along and want to know about sponge barnacles. Um, and the fact that that data has been captured with, with all of this rich detail that he's shared in photos as well, um, makes it still a really valuable data set, even if those records have not yet been mobilized through the verification process. So I wanted to put this up here because if anyone knows someone who's an expert in barnacles, who has some time that they could input into um, being a volunteer ver verifier on iRecord, uh, then, Keith would be really thrilled if someone could take a look at his barnacle records. Um, and also in Sussex, we have this incredibly active and dynamic network of volunteer recording societies covering lots of different groups of taxa in the terrestrial environment uh, and Sussex's rivers and streams and other habitats. So I don't have time to talk to you about how all of those uh, groups are using iRecord, but I thought I'd pick out uh, a handful. Um, so the dragonflies are an example of a group that works really nicely with iRecord. Um, it's a relatively manageable taxonomic group with a manageable number of records. Uh, and it's, it's possible to photograph um, or get a photograph for, for a lot of observations. Um, so, we have a volunteer verifier locally, Simon Linnington, who gets a lot of excellent support from the British Dragonfly Society. Uh, and he finds it to be a very effective tool for data entry and verification. Uh, and here's your second Willow Emerald <laughs> photo of the iRecord Symposium. I'll have to look out and see if anyone, there are any more later on. Um, Sussex Fungus Group um, has elected to choose iRecord to capture and share their fungus records, um, primarily because of the verification network. We've got people actively engaged in reviewing fungus records that are shared for Sussex, um, which I know isn't the case everywhere. Uh, and also because that data is made available to um, local environmental record centers and openly accessible via the iRecord website. So Nick Aplin from um, Sussex Fungus Groups made the point about what a significant role iRecord plays in bringing um, the mycological recording community together. Uh, and they've used it on projects like Sussex Spring Fungus Fortnight, which you can see illustrated on this slide. Uh, and he highlights that the verification process facilitates collaboration and knowledge sharing, which has helped to foster a sense of community among mycological recorders in Sussex. Um, not all groups lend themselves so easily to 
recording in iRecord. So Sussex Ornithological Society does take in uh, bird records that are shared via iRecord. Um, but it's it's almost an insignificant recording system for birds in Sussex, I've been told by um, the um, database manager for Sussex Ornithological Society. Um, and Sussex SOS would recommend that users use bird track for birds. And this um, graph that John sent me, I thought was really illuminating in terms of the different systems that are in play. Uh, BTO bird track there, clearly the preferred system for sharing bird records in Sussex, for good reason, because uh, it's built for bird recording. Uh, and I record um, ticking along at just a few percent of the county bird data set. So um, I record not necessarily the ideal system for all taxonomic groups, um, but if you, you're taking on a group approach, as Kieran uh, and John have already highlighted, there are benefits in getting all the records into one system. Um, plants have been another group where over the past 10 years, it's been a real challenge thinking about how to deal with verification of plant records because there are a lot of plants. Um, plants don't necessarily lend themselves to having their key identification features photographed. Um, and there are relatively few people with sufficient botanical expertise to be able to verify plant records. So historically, it's been a challenge um, getting plant data verified and mobilized for Sussex via iRecord. But in the last year or two, we've made masses of progress on that, working with uh, members of Sussex, uh, Sussex Botanical Recording Society. And I've just pulled out a bit of feedback um, from Neville and Ruth in Sussex Botanical Recording Society here. Uh, through through iRecord, they've been made aware of many rare species, providing a gasp of excitement. Um, and you've got a picture there of one of them, marsh fern. Uh, and they've also flagged up that the activities function is a strength that could be developed further because it does allow that development uh, of a sense of community, encouraging recorders to do more through inspiration of seeing what their peers have been up to. And I think um, John's talk just now has been an excellent example of that. And also Ruth has highlighted that she'd like to encourage people to record, continue to record common things as well as the rarities. Uh, and she wants the word to go out that plants in Sussex are being verified. Uh, so there you go, if you're based in Sussex, um, it's worth sending your records in. Uh, and Ruth and Neville look forward to receiving them. Um, and she'd really recommend using iRecord because it means you can get feedback from verifiers where that network is in place. Um, it's not just recording groups that are using um, iRecord. Uh, I got some feedback from the Natural England Field Unit who have their own activity and you can see there just um, what a broad spread of where they've been. I'm not quite sure what they're doing in Scotland. Um, They've got their own activity and they really like that you can bulk upload via a spreadsheet that makes it really easy for them. Uh, and it means they've got a way to demonstrate that Natural England is contributing to UK wildlife recording at a large scale uh, and they love that their data will be accessible to everyone. Uh, and it's also really helpful to them that records are verified um, because it gives a greater degree of confidence in the data's accuracy. Um, but on sort of alongside that, it can be a, a challenge for verifiers who are volunteers, sometimes working through those large um, data sets that might be uploaded by Natural England or, or other uh, ecological surveyors. Um, we've also got a couple of uh, groups in Sussex who are doing similar things to John, although I don't think on quite such a big scale. Uh, so here's one example, Curdford and Wisborough Green Parishes Wildlife Group. Uh, this group was really galvanised um, by a proposal for fracking uh, on the boundary of these two parishes in rural West Sussex. Uh, and the Parishes Wildlife Group was set up uh, in response to that to facilitate local wildlife surveys and recording. 
it was a relatively under-recorded area um, and they've done a huge amount of organising um, special different surveys, dragonfly surveys along the river, um, bat talks and plant walks. Um, and they've introduced iRecord to those um, systems of surveys and events that they're doing in order to encourage people to share their records. And they have set up an iRecord activity. Um, but as John mentioned, encouraging new users can be a challenge. Uh, and that's something that they have also encountered. Uh, so they estimate that they've got about 20 people contributing to their iRecord activity. Um, but, but it's generating really valuable data uh, alongside the surveys that they've commissioned. And that evidence base is now helping to inform neighborhood planning in both of those parishes. Uh, and there's lots of individual recorders using iRecord. Um, and I've just picked out uh, a couple who've, who've spoken to me about iRecord recently. Um, Chris Chapman is very happy that iRecord exists um, because it gives him this channel to share his biological records and make them available to decision makers uh, and other interested parties. Um, and he sees iRecord as being really key to that. Um, he's also someone who's flagged up that in the bigger picture, it's no doubt a good thing that there's now a feed from iNaturalist into iRecord. Um, but for him personally, it, it does cause some issues. So our approach to that in Sussex has been to work with our volunteer recording contacts to make sure information about how the um, link between iNaturalist and iRecord works is available uh, and able and, and enable uh, recorders and verifiers to make their own decisions about how they use those systems and deal with the linkage between them. Um, I uh, couldn't go through this talk without mentioning my big boss at work, Chris Corrigan, uh, Chief Executive at uh, Sussex Wildlife Trust. He's someone who's always loved wildlife and has a lifetime's worth of notebooks. Uh, and I record means that he can now put those records to real use. Uh, when I mentioned he was, <laughs> I was giving this talk, uh, he flooded my inbox with lots of lovely pictures uh, of um, wildlife that he's recorded in Sussex uh, and, and captured on iRecords so that those records can be used for conservation purposes. So just one of those examples here, uh, counted and recorded on iRecord. And I think this speaks to a real strength of iRecord is that it, it's ideal for people who are already biological recorders, who are perhaps making those records in notebooks, iRecord enables people to mobilize those records. Um, right, I have to whiz through some more. We've also got professionals uh, using iRecord. Uh, it works really well for them with the functionality for um, entering data uh, and sharing it. Um, the ecologist at Gatwick Airport is a massive champion of iRecord. Uh, it was a real game changer for her, enabling her to keep all her biological data in one place. Uh, and she really loves the phone app, which she also uses on surveys uh, while she's out and about. Uh, and finally, I focused a lot on the positives. Could iRecord be better? Of course it could. Uh, here's an example. I was scrolling through iRecord looking for pictures for my talk. Here's one of mine. What was I thinking? Who did I think this photo of, a, <laughs> of what is supposed to be a carrying crow would be useful? Um, but it was really early in the morning and I'm not really a birder. So, you know, I'm just one person making some dubious decisions occasionally about what I put into the system. And of course that has impacts on verifiers and people managing the data. Um, so there's lots of things that could be improved. And when I mentioned to people I was doing this talk, uh, I just just the sort of suggestions and ideas and feedback I got back uh, amounted to about 3000 words of feedback um, that I will package up and hand over to BRC to go through in a bit more detail than this talk. Um, but another great thing about iRecord is that the Biological Record Centre does welcome feedback uh, and I've also heard locally that Martin Harvey has been very kind and helpful um, to people who might be struggling with the system. So that 
brings my talk to an end, uh, possibly gone a bit over time. Um, but thanks for listening, uh, and I will hand back to Kieran. <laughs>